want to thank you for joining us to another night of our Keep the Faith Revival. And this evening, we are all in store for a treat. We have a powerful, powerful woman of God in Chaplain Alexis Madrid, who has a special word from the Lord just for us tonight. But not only that, we're going to be blessed with a musical selection from Sister Kayla, and I know she's going to touch our hearts as well. But we do want to encourage you that you don't just keep these blessings to yourself, but you please share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Please share this broadcast. Uh, even if you're watching us on YouTube, don't take these blessings and hold them to yourself. But I'm sure you have friends, loved ones, co-workers, and even neighbors who can be blessed from this broadcast if you simply share it. But we do want to encourage you to sow a seed into the Daughter of Zion Church. And so we're going to put right before you on the screen different ways that you can give to the DOZ Church. Uh, that you can go to our website. That you can return a love gift through Cash App. That you can also return a love gift by simply mailing it in to our P.O. Box. So give if you've been blessed. And so, without further ado, enjoy. You are the word of the beginning. One with God alone, Lord, most high. You
so today we are going to turn to Mark 14. Mark 14. And in Mark 14, verses 3 and 9, we meet Jesus and the disciples at the house of Simon the leper. We meet them at Simon the leper. And Mark states that a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil or spikenard. And I'm coming down to Mark 13, 3. And it says that Simon the leper had been healed at some point in Jesus's ministry. So in order to thank Jesus for healing, him he was probably having a feast to celebrate his cleansing anyway this woman had an alabaster box or a flask filled with spikenard see alabaster is a translucent stone used to make ornamented jewelry boxes or other items of value and spikenard is a precious perfume imported from India it was made from plants that grow in the high elevations of the Himalayas. You see, this perfume was very costly. It was about 300 denarii or a year's wage. Now, how many of us would pay a year's wage for perfume? This cost more than Gucci. This cost more than Versace. This cost more than all the other expensive perfumes. We might compare this per Creed is the best smelling perfume that I've ever smelled and it cost a couple of hundreds of dollars. Guys, I've smelled Creed. It's a man's perfume and oh my goodness. Whoo. So I could just imagine just how, uh, 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 how, how the aroma of this perfume. And it said that John identifies this woman as Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. And the text says that Mary broke the box and anointed Jesus' feet. She used her crowning glory, her hair as a towel in John 12, 3. And the disciples and the other men in the house were upset because they believed that it was a waste. And what the disciples saw as a waste, the Lord saw as worship. Jesus rebuked the disciples and said to them, leave her alone. She has done a good work for me. She has come to anoint my body for my burial. Jesus said, leave her alone. She does a good work. Mary's act of service came out of the abundance of her heart. You got to understand Mary's predicament. Mary was coming from somewhere. And because of what she realized what Jesus did for her, she sacrificed everything that she had. She did not do it for accolades. As a matter of fact, Mary was taking a risk. Mary was taking a risk. You see, in our Christian walk, risks are involved. Bold moves are mandatory. And we're going to see more bold moves as the story unfolds. Mary gave all that she had. A good work. She gave her very best and her most precious a good work. You will never know, you will never do what you can do until you give him both your all and your very best a good work. Today's message is just titled, A Good Work. Let us pray. Hover on me, Holy Spirit. Bathe my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Father, come, oh come, and fill me now. Lord, I am weakness, so much weakness. At thy sacred feet, I bow. Lord, I need you. I greatly need you. Come, oh come, and fill me now. And let's go to Mark 15. Let us go, turn with me to Mark 15. Mark 15, 40 and 41. Mark 15, 40 and 41. And it reads, there were also women looking on from afar. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the less and Salome. And verse 41 says that who also followed him and ministered 
to him while he was in Galilee. There is this narrative that women are silent in scripture. There is a narrative that women were not important. There is a narrative that women are inferior. But the Bible says that in Jesus's ministry, there were women that followed him. Not only did they follow him, these women ministered to him while he was in Galilee. These women provided for Jesus out of their substance. They took what they had and they made sure that Jesus and his disciples were comfortable. A good work. You see, ministry only means service. We like to talk a lot of ministry. I'm the minister of this and I'm the minister of that. Or we think that minister is synonymous to male. We think that minister and male are, are, are synonyms, but ministry only means service. We are not all called to be pastors, but as Christians, listen to me, we are not all called to be pastors, but as Christians, we are all called to be ministers. We are all called to serve, and women in Jesus' time serve. Jesus himself says that he did not come to be served, but to serve. How many of us like to pick and choose how and when we serve? The Bible said that these women came together and out of what they had, they provided for Jesus, making Jesus' mission a little more comfortable. Therefore, in every capacity we can, we ought to serve. We look at the church and we see the pastor at the head and then we see the elders. And then we, we as we, we, we like to think of it as a hierarchy. But, but the Bible says that the body of Christ, we are all priesthood of believers. There is no hierarchy. We are all called to serve. God calls the Christian. We like to think that if, you know, the deacons are lower than the elders or if you get to be a, you, you're, you're at, in one season, you're an elder and the next season it's your deacon. We like to think of it as a, dem, a demotion. We like to think that the work that the deaconesses do are, 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 are those of being a servant because that they're, they're women and that's the only thing they're capable of doing. We think because you're unmarried, you can't serve in certain capacities of the church. We think that because you are a woman, you can't serve in certain capacities of the church. But the Bible says that in order for the church to be perfected, in order for the church to be made whole, we all have to be able to serve in different capacities the only thing that god needs from us is a willingness to serve i used to work on an aircraft carrier and if you ever looked on an aircraft carrier you see a bunch of people running around a bunch of people running around and 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 we tend to look at at, at those the pilots who are flying the airplanes as the most important thing but if we can't get the the airplane off the deck and the people that are responsible for making sure that the plane gets off the catapult are those are never seen they're underneath the the, the the aircraft carrier sometimes they never get to see the sun but i promise you they are not the least of these the people that feed those pilots are also important those who make the beds and empty the trash we are all important in this work of ministry and as we continue on and we see the the women that were present at the crucifixion of Jesus all the gospel writers agreed that the women that ministered to Jesus listen to me look at this look at this look at this text all the women that ministered to Jesus in his life were present at his death the women that fed Christ and his disciples, the women that made sure that they had something hot in their stomach. You know, my, my grandma used to always harass me to make sure I had something hot in my stomach in the morning. Whether it be oatmeal, cream of wheat, and I hear that uh, sugar does go on grits. Cream of wheat, cornmeal, we always had to have something hot to eat. It could be 159 degrees outside. 
You always had to have something hot to eat. And these women made sure that the men were cared for a good work. And Mary and her church sisters were there. And I know that it pained their hearts to see the object of their affection in such agony. It was the saddest Friday in history. Jesus had just been crucified. The king of kings died like a sinner for sinners, but it had to come to pass because it said that he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. But I stand before you to tell you it is by his stripes that we are healed. And, I, and, and the son of God had become the sacrificial lamb. And I cannot imagine the pain Mary, the mother, mother of Jesus felt. I'm a mother and I cannot. It's indescribable. It's unfathomable. It's unimaginable. I cannot in, uh, 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 fathom the pain that the, a mother would feel. It says that there is no pain and there is no grief like that of the loss of a child and I think it was at that moment that Mary understood Simeon's prophecy when he said a sword would pass through your own soul also there is nothing like a mother's love and I, I believe that one of the reasons that, that the women love Jesus so much there's nothing like a mother's love and I just want to inject that I don't believe that Sarah was up at the time Abraham was going to go sacrifice Isaac. Nope. Oh, no, no. Who? 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 I don't think Sarah was up, Sister Fox. Couldn't have been. It wasn't going to be no sacrifice today. You know, but I believe that one of the reasons that the women loved Jesus so much was because he treated them differently from the other men in their society. You see, women in Jesus' time were often seen as second-class citizens. Women had no autonomy. Women were property either of their fathers or their husbands. And, 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 and you see, they were seen, but not heard. They were subhuman, inferior. There is an, an old um, Jewish prayer. Uh, the Hasidics sometimes still use it. Before they pray, they say, thank you, God, that you didn't make me a Gentile or a woman. And I believe that Jesus saw through the hearts of women. He saw beyond their faults and he saw their need. And Jesus communicated to their needs. I believe Jesus took time out to talk to these women. Jesus was kind to these women. You see, a lot of times we are in leadership and we want to be mean to people. You can't be in leadership and be nasty. You can't be in leadership and be rude. You can't be in leadership and be mean and still expect people to respect your authority. Many of us are in leadership and we're just rude. You can't be in leadership and, 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 and think that people are going to want to work with you and work for you. I believe that even though the other men might have been mean to the women or think that there was a women's, a woman's place. You know, they like to say that the woman's place is in the kitchen. You know, are you want breakfast in bed, you better sleep in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody got to eat. He who wants to eat needs to learn how to cook. You know, but I believe that 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 Jesus took time out for these women. You know, yeah, men. I'm tell y'all right now. Women like to talk. Yes, we do. We like to talk. So if your woman is getting on your nerves, or she's nagging you and harassing you, just take 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Turn your phone off, put it down, 
and ask her how she's doing. How's her day? You ain't even got to really listen. You just got to act like you're listening. Just act like you're listening. But we like to speak. You know, studies show that little girls speak sooner than little boys. We love to communicate. So if you want to make your relationship a little better, just take some time and show your, your woman some, not just affection, but attention. And I promise you, it will pay off big time. Trust me on that. Just take an opportunity to just talk to them. And, 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 and don't forget to interject. Really? Wow. I can't believe she said that. Just listen, trust me, trust me. I, I believe that, that, that because Jesus created us, he understood our need for verbal communication. And I imagine that Jesus took time out to ask Joanna how she managed to get those grass stains out of her house husband's robe. Was it the power of tide? I believe that he may have mentioned to Mary that he noticed that Zebedee was gaining a little weight. Is she putting something extra in the unleavened bread? I believe that Jesus might have brought the woman coupons from the marketplace, which announced that if you buy two fish, you'll get five loaves free. I think that the women love Jesus because they realize that he loved them first and he loved them best. Jesus was no respecter of person. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to restore fallen humanity and humanity includes women. Jesus also came to save women. A lot of us like to think that Jesus didn't come to also save Eve. Jesus didn't just come to save Adam. He also came to save and restore Eve. In whatever way the Savior interacted with these women, he profoundly impacted their lives and it is very evident in how they responded in his death now don't don't, don't get me wrong we're, we're, we're not saying that that men are not important men are very 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 important they are very important as a matter of fact my favorite scripture in the bible is when it says let us make man praise the lord so, so, but, but, but right now we're talking about, about women. A woman's love is different. We're different. We're not the same. And Mark mentions that certain women remained at the cross. They remained at the cross and it deserves mention that the women shine brightly in the gospel narratives. Considerations of personal safety drove the men into hiding. The devotion of the women, the, the, the devotion of the women put love to Christ above their own welfare. When the men were afraid, the women came out. The men were afraid for their personal safety. And, and, and it was love and duty that pulled the women out of the dark. These inferior subhuman not worthy of being honored. They were the last at the cross and the first at the tomb. A good work. And now we're going to deal with Mary Magdalene, as we said earlier. And while I was, I, I was researching uh, Mary Magdalene, uh, she's mentioned three, by three of the four gospel writers as one of the women who attended to Jesus. Mark says that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, was there. Mary, Matthew says that Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, the mother of Zebedee, uh, the mother of Zebedee's sons was there. John, John says that Mary, Jesus' mother, and his aunt, and Mary Magdalene was there. Three of the four gospel writers mentioned specifically that Mary Magdalene was there. A good work 
In Mark 15, 43, Mark tells us that uh, Joseph, Joseph of, of Arimathea took courage and, and asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Remember, we're talking about being bold. When you have an, an encounter with Jesus, he makes you do bold things. He makes you take risks. And Joseph of Arimathea, we're talking about the crucifixion. Come with me to the crucifixion. And he had a brand new tomb that he had made for himself. But he offered to bury the consolation of Israel there. A good work. And Jesus had died. And, and, and they wrapped the master in rich linen. And they laid him in the tomb and, and, and as we continue to read Mark I see that Mary Magdalene was there watching what these men were doing and and what devotion what loyalty what love you see the Sabbath was approaching and even though these disciples were sincere and genuine the setting of the Sun would not afford them the time to anoint the body of Christ the day that they wanted to uh, understand that Jesus was perfect he was perfect in life and Jesus was also perfect in death he also kept the Sabbath holy Adventist narrative makes us view Mary Magdalene and Mary, to Beth, uh, Mary of Bethany as the same person. Mary and her sisters observed what was going on. They observed what were going on, man. I, 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 I know some church mothers here. They're good at observation. Church mothers that can watch you. Just watch from afar. And they can see what's going on. They can tell when you're hungry. They can tell when something's not going on right at home. I've watched church mothers and women watch women who come into church with little children and, and they're frustrated and they're tired. And I've seen some of these church mothers and of these church, this, this, these women church ushers and they come and they don't say anything and they pick up the little ones and you can see the, 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 the relief on these young mothers faces because somebody took time to observe them. And to pay attention to what they needed. I, I've seen uh, 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 some mothers look at, at, at the young ones or, or, or the youth or, or older people and notice that they hadn't eaten and offer something to eat just by observation. And Mary and her church sisters observed what was going on. And they, they, they observed where Jesus was laid and they vowed to return. Chapter 16 says that when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome bought the spices. Remember the men did not have a chance to, to anoint the body because of time. But these women said that we're going to go and do to him what he deserves. And early in the morning, they, they, they had made up in their mind that they were going to bring the spices and they were going to anoint the body of the one whom they love. And the text continues on to say, very early in the morning. <laughs> very early in the morning, these women had resolved that they were going to come back to the tomb and they were going to meet and anoint the Savior very early in the morning. And I don't know about you, but there's something about meeting with Jesus very early in the morning oh i can hear my grandmother singing very early in the morning in the morning when i rise in the morning when i rise david says in psalm 63 oh god you are my god early in the morning will i seek you and he says in psalm 5 and 3 my voice you shall hear in the morning oh lord in the morning shall i direct my prayer and he says but i will cry to you for help oh lord in the morning psalm 9 90 14 says satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love psalms 30 and 5 says that weeping may weeping may weeping may endure for night but joy comes not in the afternoon joy comes in the morning something about meeting with Jesus early in the morning 
And Mary and her sisters got up early that morning to seek the Savior. Family, shouldn't we get up early in the morning to meet our Savior? Shouldn't we wake up in the morning to meet our Savior? Shouldn't our mornings belong to Jesus before we go about our daily lives? Shouldn't we seek the face of the one who is responsible for getting us up early in the morning? Sometimes we wonder why our days are horrible, why we're having bad days after bad days, and we wonder why our lives are not what we would want them to be. We wonder why we are depressed and miserable, and I implore you to take a look at your morning devotional life. Take an inventory of your mornings. Resolve to meet your Lord and Savior, in the morning. Begin your mornings with Jesus and see what he does to your afternoons. Anyway, Mary and her sisters came to the tomb. I believe that they were church sisters, but pray with me. And, 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 and they came to the tomb very early in the morning because they came with a mission. They wanted to anoint Jesus. Man, there is nothing like women on a mission. Women, nothing like women on a mission. I remember when my grandma and them had community service. You know, my grandma uh, had, 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 uh, was in charge of, of some of the community service missions. And stuff would be going on with a family. Listen, stuff would be going on in church with a family and you wouldn't even know. They would call each other. And they would make plans. And they had already devised a plan of attack. And you wouldn't know. Somebody in the church would need help. And these women would already be on it. Oh, they would be in church on Saturday very early. Because, you know, my grandma had the key to the church. You know, and you couldn't tell my grandmother that she wasn't the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> you know, uh, Sabbath afternoon. Uh, they would be at the nursing homes. They would be at the homes of the sick and the shut in and and on sunday they would be at homes not 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 gossiping not talking about people but they would be at the homes of those who were not able to do for themselves and they would be mopping they would be vacuuming somebody would have some uh, rice and peas somebody would have 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 some some soup somebody would have 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 food bread and they would come and they would clean and they would minister and and and, and you know my, my, my you know at that time my grandma was old school they didn't wear pants you know the women didn't wear pants and, and they had these long skirts and they would gird up their dresses you know they'll pull the skirt from the bottom up and they'll tuck it in and they will gird up their loins and they would put on a scarf you know they would have a head tie and they would get to work and, 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 and they would be singing while they would be working. They would be singing. And, and, and I, I, I remember them singing, uh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And, 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 and there would be these women would be singing and, 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 and they would be cleaning, serving, serving. That is what God wants us to do, to serve. And I imagine Mary and these women were out of the morning, out of, out of the house before the sun came up. Hoo, hoo. They were out of the houses before the sun came up. And, 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 and if they were like my grandma, they always had a bag. They always had their purses and they always had a pocketbook because they were on a mission. And, and, and I don't know if, if Mary and her church sisters had a coach, camel skin Gucci. I don't know if they had Michael Kors, but I don't know what they had. But I know that these pocketbooks had spices to anoint their Lord. And I imagine Mary asking the other Mary, because you know all they named Mary. 
Mary, do, 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 do you have the myrrh? Mary, I have the myrrh. Do you, did you wrap it in foil or in Ziploc? And he said, do, 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 do you have the frankincense? He said, I had it. I took it out of my freezer. It was because, you know, they got stuff all in the freezer and in the fridge. You don't know what it is. And, and, and they were ready to anoint the Lord. And these women did not ask for a podium. They did not ask for a loudspeaker. They didn't hand out any flyers. They didn't blog anything on the internet. They served wholeheartedly within their capacity. I'm here to tell you that God does not always need a pastor. Listen to me, church. God does not always need a pastor. Sometimes he needs somebody that can make a good casserole that freezes well. Sometimes God does not always need a doctor. He needs somebody that can hold somebody's hands during chemo. God does not always need a pilot. He needs somebody, a good deacon like, like, like Brother St. Louis, who can drive the church van and pick up people for church. God does not always, God doesn't care about degrees and certifications. Sometimes God doesn't need a pastor. He just needs a praying old woman that knows something about the name Jesus. A good work. A good work. And I believe that as the Mary and her sisters were on the way to the tomb, they were on their way to the tomb that they were very sullen because they, they, they were on a mission. And Mark says that as they walk to the tomb, I'm in the text, Mark 16, 3. As they walk to the tomb, Listen to this. Watch this. As they walked to the tomb, they said amongst themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Remember that Jesus was entombed with a big a stone at the front. And they asked, who will roll away the stone from the tomb because see they knew that they needed to anoint the body of Jesus but how will they get to the body of Jesus if a stone was at the entrance of the tomb and they asked the question who's going to roll away the stone they also knew that a Roman seal and a guard of soldiers were at the entrance of the tomb but I'm stand before you to let you know that love will leap over mountains of difficulties to reach the object of its affection. Ladies, if a man is pursuing you and he's finding all types of excuses as to why he can't come see you, let him go. Fellas, if a woman says she's interested in you, but she's finding all kinds of excuses why she can't make time for you. She's not the one because love always finds a way. But these, the, the, the text says that they were walking to the tomb and, and, and they were wondering who's going to roll away the stone. They were walking. And they wondered who's going to roll away the stone. The text didn't say that they stopped and pondered. They walked and they kept on walking. They didn't figure it out. They didn't answer the question. They kept on walking. And as they kept on walking, these women had already resolved in their mind, stone or no stone, we have a job to do. And while they were wondering aloud who would roll away the stone from the door of the tomb, they looked up and they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. I wish somebody would shout how many times we tried to help others. And God opened doors for us. How many times we try to do the impossible and God reveals to us that he is the God of the impossible. I wish I had a church. God himself blesses us when we bless others. How often it happens that when we are intent on honoring the Savior, 
that difficulties are removed before we even get to them. When we are intent on honoring the Savior, difficulties are already removed. Who will roll away the stone? They didn't stop. Nobody stopped. Nobody said, let's go back. We, it can't be done. They kept on walking. And when they got to the place where they're supposed to be, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. What stone in your life is God trying to roll away, but you won't even start walking what stone is God trying to roll away but you have stopped in your journey God is saying that keep on walking because when you get to your destination you will realize that the stone has already been rolled away when the women got to the tomb the stone was already rolled away some scholars believe that the stone was rolled away not to let Jesus out but to let the women in. Let's watch this, watch this. The Bible said that Jesus arose with all power in his hands. Jesus says that I I I I lay down my life that I might take it back up. He had the power. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. But the stone was rolled away. Not to let him out. Because we already know that the grave can contain him. We don't need somebody else to roll away the stone. Because he said, I have the power to do that. How futile it is that we can... They actually had a whole corrections facility to try to hold Jesus in the tomb. The whole corrections department, the sheriff, guards, JSO, NYPD, LAPD, Fed, CIA. They put them all on duty to hold the Savior in the tomb. And, 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 and because they didn't realize the kind of power that they were dealing with. They didn't realize the kind of power that they were dealing with. The same Jesus that, that, that made everything because the Bible said that there was nothing that was made that he didn't make. The same Jesus that when he spake, it was so. And when he commanded, it stood fast. They tried to put a stone to keep him in. But the Bible said that the stone, the, the scholar said that the stone was rolled away. Not to let Jesus out. But to let these women in to see that the resurrection had taken place. I just want to say thank God for the resurrection. Now we look back. Where were Jesus' disciples? Now these are the people that were walking with Jesus, right? These were the people that knew Jesus as intimately as you can get to him. Right? So now if you've been walking, Jesus started his ministry, what, 33, 33 and a half years old? 30, 30 years old, lasted for three years. He died at 33. So you've been walking and talking with this man all this, all this time. And you hear him tell you all the time, listen, I'm coming back in three days now. You know, three days, I'm coming back. I'm going to die. And in three days, I'm coming back. I know that this because my mama used to go to work and she would say, I'm coming back at this time. You better make sure my house clean. Oh, yeah. She would say, we know the time she went to work and we know the time she's coming back. And so she's coming home at 5, at 4.50, 4.50, we cleaning up the house because my mama said, you better make sure that my house is clean when I get back. And she said, you know, make sure you take the chicken out the freezer. I'm coming at 5. She said, she's been saying this. 
Now the disciples were with Jesus and he said, listen, I'm, I'm about to die, y'all. But don't despair. On the third day, I'm going to rise again. They saw him die. Now, it would be different if Jesus was just talking and these things didn't happen. Everything that he said that was going to happen, happened. And they would, I would have been like, wait a minute. He did die. Okay, they crucified. He said, I'll be crucified. But on the third day, on the third, now he had 12 of them people walking around with him. I got three kids. All three of them don't listen. None of them don't listen. But out of the 12, nobody listened. And I would think that if Jesus said that he was going to rise again on the third day, somebody would have been at the tomb just to make sure that he wasn't lying. And, and, and they had forget that Jesus said that, that I am the resurrection and the life. They didn't get that. He said, I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. They forgot that Jesus said, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it back up. Nobody was waiting for Jesus. But they didn't understand. See, but the women, the women, you know, they said that 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 the uh, the the best person to tell a secret is a husband. They ain't listening. I know that for a fact. They not listening, and none of the men were listening because nobody showed up at the tomb. But the women were paying attention. The women were paying attention. The women, especially Mary, had a res relentless sense of duty. Mary was there every step of the way. Listen to me. Mary was there hanging on to every word of the Savior. And Mary had a special relationship with Jesus. This was not a sexual relationship. This was not a romantic relationship. Mary was one of Jesus' patients. Mary was one of Jesus' patients. You see, Mary knew something about bondage. Mary knew something about slavery. Mary knew something about migraines. Mary knows something about depression. She knows something about suicide attempts. Mary knew something about being broke. Mary knew something about being marginalized. Mary knew something about being demon possessed. Mary understood those things because for a long time that was the story of Mary's life. Mary loved Jesus because it was in her encounter with Jesus that he gave her her freedom. Mary was Jesus's patient. And, 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 and the, the, the word said that she was once possessed by seven demons and she was tormented day and night. And somebody told Mary that the great physician now is there and Jesus became her deliverer. And, and sometimes we do this in church and we see people come into our churches and we judge them and we think that they're crazy. And I think that, that, that Mary might have walked into our churches jumping, not sitting because she couldn't hold her mute because you don't know what Mary had been through and I imagine that Mary was getting ready to testify because she had been through something and we were looking at her be like this lady is crazy and Mary was like yeah I used to be crazy but I've been delivered I imagine Mary saying you can't tell it like I can tell it and I imagine Mary saying that I was sinking deep in sin Woo! Far from the peaceful shore. Very, oh my God, deeply stained within. And I was sinking to rise no more. And Mary said, but. Mary says, but. She said, but the master. She said, the master of the sea. He heard my despair cry. <laughs> she said, and from the waters lifted me. You don't know what it's like to be sinking, thinking that it's over. There is no way out. You're sinking and you can't swim. And he said, and the master heard my despairing cry. 
And from the waters lifted me. She said, now safe am I. She said, love lifted me. When nothing else could help. It was love that lifted me. Mary understood that. Mary understood what it was like to be down and out. Mary understood what it was like for people to charge you and look at you for the mistakes that you made. But I stand before you to let you know that when you are sinking in the waters of life, when you are sinking in the waters of life, remember that your lifeguard walks on water. Woo! Mary realized when she hoped against all of hope that Jesus saved her. Jesus freed her. And that's why we can't judge people. You don't know the cost of the oil. You don't know the cost of the oil. You don't know the cost of the oil. And there's so many of us who are afraid to approach the Savior. We want to come to him. But it's the church itself that becomes the stone at the entrance of the tomb. With our self-righteousness and our rules and our regulations. Teaching for doctrine. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Mary had an encounter. Not with books. Not with the gospel of diet. She had an encounter with the actual one that could save her. And he saved her. God, Jesus delivered her. And see, Mary knew about his amazing grace. Ah. Mary knew firsthand about his amazing grace. And you, when, when, when God brings you out of some mess. See, a lot of us forget where we were when he found us. We forget where we were when he found us. And Mary remembered. And she said, even in his death. Even in his death. The least I can do is anoint him. She entered the garden planning to spend the morning doing one last favor for the one who had given her her freedom. I didn't say bondage. He gave her her freedom because you got to understand church folk that where the spirit of the Lord is. It doesn't say where the spirit of the Lord is. There's doctrine. It doesn't say where the spirit of the, world, the, the Lord is. There's tradition. It doesn't say that where the spirit of the Lord is, there change. It says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. And Mary understood that freedom. And she wanted to be able to honor Jesus by anointing him. The pen of inspiration, Auntie Ellen says that Mary had been looked upon as a great sinner. But Christ knew the circumstances that shaped her life. It was he who lifted her from the despair and ruin. Seven times she heard his rebuke of the demons that controlled her heart and mind. It was Mary who sat at his feet and learned of him. It was Mary who poured upon his head the precious anointing oil and bathed his feet with her tears. Mary stood be beside the cross and followed him to the tomb. Mary was first at the tomb. She was last at the cross and first at the tomb. So many times we are fed this, and I'm coming to a close. So many times we are taught this narrative that women are insignificant. Even in our churches, 70% of our churches, pick a religion, pick one. 70% of them are women. 
And, 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 and as I'm reading the, 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 the Gospels and understanding Jesus, his life and his death and his ministry, it said that the Holy Spirit came to Mary, biological mother. He had a biological mother. And God was his father. So he's connected to human biologically. He's connected to humanity biologically through a woman. It's through a woman. And, 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 and I can imagine, and, and it's, it's crazy. And pastor said it earlier that, that the last days he said, my, my spirit shall fall upon all flesh. I've been told, listen, Christ got his humanity from a woman. So, 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 so I can, I can, I can conceive the savior. I can just take the savior. I, 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 I can birth the savior. I, I, follow me here. I, I, I can feed and nurture the savior. But because I have ovaries, I can't proclaim him. How crazy does that sound? That's not the gospel. They said I can, I'm not supposed to be up here. Because of my gender. I can birth him, but I can't proclaim him. And, 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 and because Jesus, you know, Jesus come to right the wrongs. And Jesus said, I'm going to show you. But even in death, he said, I'm going to show you some. He said, I'm going to show you something. Mary was the first evangelist. <laughs> she got ordained because ordained just means authority. She was under authority at the resurrection to go and tell. She got her authority to go and tell, and I'm closing, I'm closing. And the angel saw Mary, I'm in the text, Mark 16, 7. And the angel saw Mary, and Mary got ordained to go and tell the disciples and Peter. He said, go Mary. You don't need an MDiv. <laughs> you don't need an MDiv. You, 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 you don't need any certifications. Go and tell. And it says, go and tell. Mary, go and tell everybody. And tell Peter. You got to understand, Peter had betrayed his best friend. Play something for me. And tell Peter. Peter had cursed and denied his Lord. Not one time, not two times, but three times. And tell Peter. Peter, who had stated that he would never leave the master Go, go, and, 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 and tell Peter how many times we betray the master and tell Peter how many times we sin and the devil would like us to wallow in self-pity and doubt and, 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 and tell Peter and how many times the devil trips, trips us up and we fall again and again and again and tell Peter and, 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 and Jesus says to tell Peter. Because you see, even though you fall one time, two times, three times, we don't serve a God of a one chance. We don't serve a God of a second chance. We serve a God of a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance and a sixth chance. We serve a God of infinite chances. Go and tell Peter. You see, they mention Peter by name. And Jesus is calling you by name. Jesus is calling you by name and tell Peter, I have the power to forgive sin. The same way that I had the power to walk apart that grave. I too have the power to forgive sin. And tell Peter, I have the power of restoration. And tell Peter, Peter, the devil asked that he would like to sift you as wheat. But he said, and tell Peter, I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. Jesus has already prayed for you. 
So I'm telling you as I close that God had already called your name. Peter, he'd already called you. And the devil came uh -huh, asking for you. Why do you think you got all the problems? Why do you think you got all the problems? 2021 just started. And you're wallowing in all these problems that you carried over from 2020. And he's telling you. The devil came asking for you. Yes, he did. Why you think you can't pay your bills? Why you think you got all these headaches? Why you think the cancer came back? He said the devil came knocking. He said, but I've already prayed for you. Each and every one of you. He said, and I have resurrected. I died for you and I resurrected for you. Tell Peter, each and every one of us is Peter. And God is saying that I am here for you. I didn't do all of this just for show. He said, I've already prayed for you and Jesus has already prayed for you. So man of God, woman of God, the resurrection happened for you. It already happened. So I'm telling you right now and tell Peter, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He is alive. And in him, you too can have life and have it abundantly. You got to believe. Get up out of that, 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 that notion that you're defeated. He rose victorious so that you can be victorious. The word says that those who trust in him and believe in him are going to be, we, 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 we like to say that it says that we're going to be conquerors. We're not going to be conquerors. The text says that we're going to be more than conquerors. He's already done it. You got to believe and you got to claim it. He's already, it's done. It's already done. So accept him. Somebody's out there saying, Lord, I, 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 I'm having a rough time. And I implore you to pray with me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you so much for your sacrifice on the cross. We want to thank you for doing in us a good work. And we're asking you in the name of Jesus. Father, you did it for Mary. Loose us from the chains of sin and doubt. Loose us from those sins that so easily beset us, Father. Father, give us the victory. The victory that is already done, Lord. Help us to claim it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank Pastor Madrid for that soundful message. We ask that you remember to tune in Friday evening at 7 p.m. as she has another special word for us on Friday. Let us close for prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for this time. We want to thank you for this message. Lord, we ask that you continue to keep Pastor Madrid, keep her family. Lord, we ask that someone receives this message tonight and makes a decision for you. We ask this all only in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. If you know anyone who is interested in Bible study, interested in special prayer, or they're ready to make their decision for baptism, please have them text the number 561-334-1972. That's 561-334-1972. Good night and God bless.